In this video, I'm going to go through the workflows for the bed leveling mods for the Prusa Mini Plus and the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. I'll start with the Mini, which before doing any bed leveling mods, you'll need to ensure the printer is set up square and unskewed. Follow this guide from Prusa or watch my video here, which I made before the official Prusa guide was available. It is also worth selecting the location where the printer will be positioned and to avoid moving the printer if possible. And if you have to lift the printer, to do this from the base and avoid carrying from the z-axis or cantilevered arm. Now this is the workflow guide that I use, which was written by a gentleman called Benji, to whom I am greatly thankful for sharing. And I followed this with only slight variations and use of different tools. Instead of using silicon tubing and longer machine screws, I simply bought M3 shim washers, the sizes of which come in 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 and half a mil, which can be combined to make up whatever variation of adjustment is needed. I should also mention that I've not tried the silicon version of the mod, so I can't say whether there's any real advantage to using the shim method other than it worked for me. Silicone has very good heat resistant properties and may also contribute to dampening vibrations. I did wonder though, for ease of adjustment, if I could have installed helicoil style inserts into the aluminium wire carriage and using longer countersunk machine screws in a similar way to the i3's nylock mod to adjust the heat bed height without the need for the fiddly M3 nylock nuts underneath the aluminium wire carriage. I had a look at the DXF file for the Mini's aluminium wire carriage and the mounting holes are the same size needed to tap the insert to the coil size needed, so this could have been an option, but I've committed to using shim washers and will carry on. Tool wise, I needed a 2.5mm stubby hex key and a 5mm nut spinner along with the T10 Torx key. I then followed the stages from point 12 onwards to generate the first height map in Prontoface, inputting those into a GitHub app described as G29 Absolute to Relative Value Converter and Plotter. Essentially, once the nozzle and heat bed have gotten up to temperature, G28 homes the three axes and G29 performs the bed mesh leveling. You will get some sums in the console once this is completed, which you can copy and paste into the input box and convert into usable information. Taking my cue from the raw values segment of the app, I can remove or position the appropriate number of washers between the standoff and aluminium base to make up the distance required. So I'm just taking the heat bed off the Prusa Mini to show you how I got the platform level. I'm using a Torx 10 tool to unscrew these countersunk machine screws. And what I did was place precision shim washers underneath the hex standoffs and around the edge where it was necessary. I think the only place I didn't do that was for the center because that's the reference point. And to highlight, as described in point six of the instructions, leave the center screw and spacer alone. Although you may find you need to tighten this, this is the reference point for the other eight fixing positions. I've already completed my mod some time ago, but would demonstrate removing a single shim washer to further reduce this deflection. I unscrewed the center right standoff and checked the washer with my vernier caliper. I then discarded one washer and began reassembling. I also checked all the other standoffs had not rattled themselves loose since the last time I did this. After which I reassembled the print bed and performed the same workflow to generate the G29 mesh leveling values.
and here you can see how those values have changed. I performed the height map several times and adjusted the number of washers until I was below 0.2 millimeters of variance. Removing the washer has lowered that value closer to the zero reference point. After which I completed the first layer calibration. Before doing this the prints would lift along the right hand side of the print bed and I found I had to limit the print size well below the maximum advertised capacity. This mod and the squaring guide have greatly improved the printing qualities and my experience using the Prusa Mini, so I highly recommend performing these tasks if you've had problems too. Alongside this, reducing the first layer print speed greatly improves the initial layer adhesion and moving to an alcohol and silicon free anti-static anti-fog lens cleaner for degreasing the print bed will also help improve print adhesion. Now this is the Prusa i3 Mark 3S Plus and again I've already completed the bed leveling mod previously but we'll point out the sources and how this modification is a little different. I'll also run the mesh leveling again to try further improve the accuracy. I'll begin by showing you the already installed nylock standoffs threaded onto the original machine screws with a washer between the underside of the heat bed and nut. These were just slightly loosened to allow them to turn without noticeably pivoting in the holes. The Prusa i3, despite its more antiquated electronics, has more features. It has a simple skew compensation with magnetic zones providing X, Y axis squaring reference points, as well as a mesh leveling cycle that includes more grid points and a higher number of probing cycles per point which ultimately amounts to greater accuracy. The mesh leveling on the Mini used a 4x4 grid with two probe measuring plungers per point, compared to the i3's maximum 7x7 grid with five probe plungers, providing you adjust this in the settings. So the last time I did this, this section here, oops. last time I did this, this section here was a little bit low, so I place a bit of captain tape. But I'm going to move that now and I'm going to redo the mesh leveling and see if that makes a difference. I use this workflow with minor changes such as placing the nylock nuts the correct way around with the addition of metal washers and heating the nozzle as well just to make sure all the variables were as similar as they might be to normal printing conditions. I set the print bed temperature to 60 plus the nozzle temperature to 170 and waited for these with an M190 command to reach the targeted temperature. I then performed a G28 homing cycle which on the i3 also performs the mesh leveling. after which I wrote G81 in the console to retrieve the leveling values. For subsequent mesh cycles, I used G80 to perform the mesh base that probe to give it its official title and G81 to retrieve the leveling status or values. So the bottom right machine screw needs to move 130 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to place this tractor here and swing that around 130. This one here going to move 137 counterclockwise. About there. Whoops. 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 Let's do this again. This is going around two, three, eight. So I've done one eighty, and then now we're going to do another fifty-eight there. And I'm just going to adjust that one as well. 
So that is uh, 180. I'm going to adjust it. 70. One of the issues with the printer, which is not easy to see, but I will flip this over in a moment when it's called, is that there's two linear bearings supporting the print bed on the left hand side, but only one in the center on the right hand side. Is that there's two linear bearings supporting the print bed on the left hand side, but only one in the center on the right hand side. And what that means is if I shimmy along here, that doesn't move so much, but that has a little bit more flex. So I've just done the mesh leveling again, and that looks really good now. I'm now doing a Z calibration macro. I'm pretty happy with that, but it is unusual that the shape only occupies such a small part of the print bed pretty much the same size as the Prusa Mini. Really this should be to scale much further across to see if the calibration has worked on the edges. So I did buy a thread repair kit in the Helicol style. This is the drill bit for drilling the pilot hole for the tap. And these are the coils which you screw into place with this tool here. And then use the last tool to punch out a little tab at the end. It's all described in the manual here. I also bought a Y carriage base. This is an official Prusa one, so it cost me a little bit. And I'm going to see about tapping these holes, all nine of them, with this kit. I had to stop because I feel like I was going to bottom out and then thread that. I think I might just do this by hand. Just whoops, 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 whoops. whoops. So it's taken the thread quite well and I feel like there is that ability to now use the nylock method with the Prusa Mini. But this is a high risk option because you'd have to tap the holes, thread them with the coil and basically try not to make any mistakes. I'm not sure if you would end up having to dismantle any of the sections to get access. Could be quite tight in certain places but you will have that additional flexibility of being able to micro adjust uh, in a slightly less fiddly way. Anyway, another option. Mm -hmm.